books. This is me, Vishwas Nayan. I'm the host of this podcast. And trust me, there is always a new need for us to evolve as a human being, right? You know, it need not have to be something like a superhero kind of a stuff, but you always want to be somebody like, you know what, can I achieve that? And you start achieving that, you know, like your journey from being just a student to a professional is a whole new different journey, right? You know, it's always that hustle. It's always that respect that you give for the work. It's always that enthusiasm that you have in order to make yourself evolve. I think Sujit sir is one of those kinds where they have always moved beyond their comfort zone and have proved that, you know what, I can achieve this. So I think Sujit sir is as his journey as an HR, you know, there's a, there's a whole new level of dilemma that comes in, right? You know what? Hey, he's an HR. Can he really work in tech? Oh, God. No. But yet, there are some people who disprove that also. So I think Sujit sir is one of them. And trust me, no other exam in the world is as tough as CH. Our discussion is going to revolve around CH. Because a lot of times when I think of an CH exam, you know, I fear that because losing such great amount of money. It's a fortune to some of us, right? And I think probably that this, this amount of insight from Sujit sir is just going to give you that right direction to start your CH exam. And thank you so much, Sujit sir, for being on my podcast. It means a lot. Thank you for having me. Yes, sir. Let's get it started. So there is always a big question that comes in, right? You know, whether the CH fits in for a hacker, CH fit for a IT engineer or professional. So what is a CH exam for a hacker or an IT professional? To be frank, CH is nothing but it's just like a IT exam or you can say IIT exam or any type of competitive exams that you have. But practically, when you think it's not specifically given for a software engineer or an IT engineer or specifically for a hacker, no. It's for everybody who wishes to achieve something beyond their reach. Because CH is something that is related completely to all the streams of the internet. You are browsing the internet, you are a CH aspirant. That is the theory that you have to keep in mind. Because whenever you browse the internet, you use multiple types of protocols, you use multiple types of applications, you use multiple network parameters also, which you have to follow. Whether you are a, say, a civil aspirant, whether you're a mechanical aspirant or EC aspirant, anything it's fine. Or even though if you're not studied also, a person who is using internet is a CH aspirant. But many people think it as a theory that only software engineers or software people, that is from the CS background, only they apply for it. Basically, it doesn't have to be like that. Anybody can do it. But the thing is that you have to be very concentrated on what you study, how you study, how much you study. These are the three things you have to be very clear and very specific about. Once you clear this off, it's absolutely easy. But only thing is you have to stable your mind, keep, keep your mind fresh and focused and keep going ahead. That will be all. But other than that, when you go for a CH. So CH exam is basically a certification for you that government recognizes you as a legal perv legal working body now if you go as an illegal working body you might be facing some issues regarding your uh, police crimes or there is a uh, there is a separate branch in india that is called as a cyber crime department which handles every crime that is coming from the it field that is a computer science field so that uh, department may be miss manhandling you if you do something illegal so rather than going illegally you have to go legally so that legal method is none other than ch which is given by the EC, ENC Council of India. That is Electronic Commerce Council of India. So now, main thing coming to the part is, CH will have heck lot of advantages for you if you clear it. CH, first of all, gives you access to the government directly. So whatever work you'll receive directly, the government will give you. Other than that, you have bounty works also, which we'll talk later about, which given by the very prestigious companies in the world, which nobody even knows about because many people are unaware even though they are ch aspirants or they have completed ch exams but still many people don't know what are bounty exam, bounty things and how bounty program works nobody has that much knowledge about it so we'll talk about that also that is a very good opportunity for people how they can achieve things through bounty because i'll give you just a small example if you like if you are aware of bounty programs you would have known this in the year 2019 when the covid was hit COVID hit India, 
Microsoft had launched a bounty program which paid a single ethical act of thirty thousand dollars if you just uh, hack their one thing and give them one flaw. Per flaw, you were paid thirty thousand dollars. If you convert it to INR, it's heck lot of money. Just imagine if you were that time a CH uh, aspirant or a CH certified person. Imagine your lifestyle, how it will be. Thirty thousand dollars in India, it's hell lot of money. So going by that. This is what a CH exam is, and it is specifically again I'm mentioning it. It's not only for CS aspirants, not only for CS students. It's for everybody who wants to learn, wants to go and understand how the world, how the world of internet works. Yeah, you know, like when I think of that exam, you know, one thing that always pops up in my mind is, you know what? It's as tough as any competitive exam. Actually, tougher than any competitive exam. Twenty-four hours for. One complete exam. It's a it's a fortune for me to even spend that amount of time. You know that's that's how it is. So now, what are the typical mistakes that everybody does when they are preparing for the CES? Like how how is that dumbness brought onto that exam, and how do they lose in that exam? Because a lot of times when we approach studying this, I think probably there's huge amount of mistakes that we are doing. So what yeah. what do you think are the typical mistakes that a CES Aspirant will do, and also, how does it badly reflect on this exam? Uh, to be frank, I don't know about other people, but specifically CS computer science background people do a very big mistake. That is not understanding the concepts that they need to clear. People, what they do now, basically, to go, you have to start with networking. You have to learn every freaking thing in the network world. So if you learn the network. Completely networking, IP mapping, Nmap, everything related to network. If you learn it completely, then your CH exam will be halfway done. But CS aspirants, what they do, CS background people, these people they go for higher end. They go for hacking basics directly without learning the network basics. That is the common mistake which is CSC aspirant does. But going by the other people, they are learning from the CSC background right now. People they I'd look up to a CSE background person that yeah this person will guide me in the computer science field, but when a computer science aspirant a computer science educationalist does this mistake, then everybody will continue to do that mistake. This is a very common thing which people do. They go for directly learning ethical hacking basics, but they don't go for learning the basics which are required to understand the ethical hacking basics. Now many people say Kali Linux will be very good for good to learn ethical hacking. But that is not the basic story. You can learn even in Windows also. But only thing is, you have to know innovative ways how to use it. That's it. Now, CAC people, whenever they're asked, "What do you do to learn ethical hacking?" First question or the first answer that comes to their mind is Kali Linux. That will be the only basic answer that they give. But technically, you don't have to use it. You can use the command prompt also. You can use the very basic and the most powerful operating system till date, DOS. You can use. DOS gives you administrative access over everything your PC handles. That is also one way to do it. Otherwise, you can use it as an integrative operating system towards your Windows or Mac. Anything it is fine. But the only thing that you have to do is you have to learn from the basics. So I would suggest every CH aspirant go by the basics, learn networking. Once you are clear with networking, you can go ahead with learning the ethical hacking basics. That will help you out in a further way. And it will help you in a more informative way, where you can understand every single concept. But if you go and learn ethical hacking directly, it's just like taking a first-year-old, one-year-old kid, and taking him to a degree college to learn the degree. It's like that. So you should not go so diverse in learning. You should go from the start, as we say, build from scratch. We have to build our knowledge in ethical hacking from scratch. It's not like other aspirant exams, like uh, your CET exams or whatever competitive exams you might take, JE, JE mains, anything. It's fine. But that you can learn it from uh, from between itself. You don't have to go from the basics. You just have to learn what is required for the exam. That's it. You can clear it off. But CH exam is nothing like that. It's like an IT exam or IIT level exam. It is very tough. Then you can count in. It's a comparison to an IAS exam, which is the toughest exam in India till date. But only thing that is the difference from here is the time frame. IAS exam you write it for five hours. This is for twenty four hours. A whole twenty four hour day you give it just to write the single exam. So one thing you have to keep in mind: you have to mentally as well as physically prepare yourself 
that is the one more mistake that people do they don't mentally prepare themselves to write an exam for 24 hours they prepare themselves for hardly 8 to 10 hours like how a human being usually works he wakes up at 9 uh, wakes up at 7 sleeps off at 10 so this time frame everybody is comfortable with but when the time frame crosses 10 pm in the night everyone tends to sleep off so that you have to start to control now itself only then your exams will be ethical and efficient enough because what i'll share my experience in this what mistake i did in my first time because i didn't clear it in the first time it's i would say it's bloody impossible to do it in the first time if you don't know what the exam is how to do it so for the first time what my mistake was i was mentally prepared but i was not educationally prepared i would say because i had no idea how the exam would work i just knew that yeah we have to crack 7 to 12 ips to clear it that's all the info i got but i didn't get it how to clear it and what to clear it from where will the ips come nothing i knew so when i went for the exam my mistake was that i spent my individual time to every single ip so i managed to crack six ips i couldn't cry complete the minimum criteria so going by the six ips i learned one thing that if you don't do multitasking if you don't give time that is arranged time to each and every ip to crack it you won't be able to clear it in time you will take heck lot of time to clear it that is what people do at the same common mistake they do once you are ready that is your process of cracking an ip is done move on to the next ip don't stick on to it until it is done just have a virtual easy to us instance if you want or you can just have a multitask a multitasking tab in your own pc also if you are using windows 10 to work your thing you have multiple desktop option in there also which you can use one desktop will run, uh, run one ip crack the other desktop will run one other one but make sure to keep in mind that you carry a powerful enough pc or a laptop that can support your work because many many times what the people will do they will take a regular laptop or a regular pc which they usually use at home and they go for the exam but that pc or that laptop can't handle that much stuff so that is one common mistake which we have to very specifically remember your pc or your laptop whatever you carry that needs to have that capacity to run only then we will be able to crack it completely and going by it my second attempt i cleared 12 ips without any fail and actually to be frank i had cleared 13 but the 13th one i didn't get marks i don't know why so i don't know what happened there but still 12 ips i cleared because i used two easy cs instances so i would suggest you guys also to make multiple desktops multiple or you can say multiple virtual machines which can run your processes simultaneously so that you can clear as much as ips as fast as possible so going by that this topic is very much important for every ch aspirant please sure make sure in mind that you distribute your time what are the topics you are clearing very be very specific to it and go from the basics please don't jump it if you jump the topics you won't be able to clear it that's the only thing i would like to say on this yeah you know when once you told about the 13th ip you know i still remember you know there are many hall of famers which are still pending like something like such a great bounty and they have not been paid some people are paid but not given hall of fame like that's the highest standard of bounty that you can achieve right yeah. you can achieve 50000 worth of bounty but achieving such great bounty i think probably that's that's a huge challenge i think cyber world is something like you know there's a new expectation which always comes up right you know something like it's good but not that great It's yeah. it's not that great, but to some people it might turn out to be that great. So so mm. that's how cyber world revolves, right? You know, you yeah. don't know who is the best hacker here because best hackers are still in the shadow where nobody knows them. Like exactly. they might be in your own shadow. They might be yeah. hacking your own system right now. Exactly. So yes. Yeah, so now you know. Now you just told about your mistakes that you had done, but like you also talked about how. how an candidate should approach an exam but like i wanted to know something this is off the topic like i just wanted to just talk off the topic because a lot of times when you are learning something there is a chance to, that you get overwhelmed about it okay oh god i know this i know that i can achieve this i can achieve that but you know that humble attempt should always be there that i'm a still a student i'm still learning too. so are there any stories that you can say while you're preparing for cas that you felt like you know what this is not that easy as what you think but you know there is a some more amount of effort that is required by me because a lot of times when i when i started studying for ch you know uh, cisp as a similar 
uh, forte or the syllabus, but it's a different story, right? You know, there is more amount of Excel files that you just have to just analyze and things like that. So cyber is everywhere. So do you have any instances where you learned that, you know, it might sound easy, but it's not that easy at all. It requires a lot of work. So are there any instances that you just found when you were learning? Yeah, actually, I have multiple like incidents like this. Because when I was, uh, I actually completed my diploma. After that, I was just uh, like working in a call center. I was exploring my options at that time. I met one person named as Muthu Rajan, sir. He's my mentor. He's my guru till date. He is, has been a pillar in my career till now. Muthu Rajan, sir, at one instance, when I was giving my interview in IBM, he was the person who was interviewing me, the interviewer. He asked me one question. How, which language are you comfortable in? Which coding language are you comfortable in? I very boldly, I said, sir, give me c I'm ready to do it. Because I was very comfortable in c at that time. So he gave me a program in c It busted my whole attitude in a second. That man had heck a lot of knowledge that I never could have even matched up to. He gave me a very simple program, actually, but I, because of my, you can call it as overconfidence or lack of uh, knowledge also, both of the things. So I just felt, okay, I'm still learning. That was one of my instances where I thought, nah, I have still a lot to do. Then I had, uh, like, I, whenever I started my career in Yavartaka College of Engineering as a lab instructor, at that time, I met one of my students. So she actually had very good IQ. Her IQ was, till date, I have not seen any student with such kind of IQ. Because when I explained any topic to her, at one instance, if I explain, even after six months, she'll remember it word to word, line to line. So good IQ she had. She taught me something at that time. Even though you are well-versed in your age, even though you're experienced a lot, but you can learn from people very much, even though they are younger than you. Because she had knowledges in some of the fields which even I didn't have. Like, I would be very frank, I'm very far from my social media life. I don't like to use my WhatsApp or Instagram or anything. I just keep it in a side that, yeah, I see her stuff, I don't usually use it. But through her, I learned what all the options are there in the social media. Like going through WhatsApp. I didn't even, to be frank, till date, I didn't even know how to use the single uh, view mode of the photo thing. Like you send a single view thing, right? I don't even know how to use it. To more frankly, I would like to say that reply thing, what we do in the internal chat, that the person has sent that same use as a reply to say something. Thing. That thing also I didn't know. That was also out of my league. Instagram, I could disable my chats so that nobody can see my profile. That also I didn't know. I was such a noob in the, the social media things. I didn't even use social media, but through her, I came to know what all the things. Then she asked me one question. Sir, why don't we develop an application which can monitor how much of our data is being sold? Because we all know that when we use Facebook, our data is integral, integrity of the data is lost. Whatever data we upload, it's sold. Gigabytes of data is sold in millions of dollars. We can't even question them because the terms and, policy, the terms and conditions already are met. So she asked me one question. Why don't we make such an application which can monitor how much data is being you know, taken and given? So that idea I never faced. Being in the IT field for so long, being using social media things, we never think how, where is our data going? So these are very many types of instances where I have learned that I am not still, uh, I know, like well-versed in the topics that I have learned. I have a heck lot of things to learn in. Still, we are in the learning curve. Whether we are 30, whether we are 40, whether 50 years of age also, we are still in the learning curve. We can learn many lot of things, like how we are in the advanced world where we use technology, whereas our parents are not in that age. So they learn from us being elder, being above 50 years of age, they learn from us what's going on in their life and how it is going on. Same way, whenever you're learning for anything, whether it's your college, whether it's your company where you work in, in an professional, uh, professionalism field, or whether it's preparing for any exam, Never keep in your mind that you have learned everything. Always there will be one or the other thing that will pull you down and say that, yeah, you don't know this. You don't know this, you have to learn. Always there will be something. So always keep in your mind that don't ever think that you know everything. Always keep in mind, you don't know anything, I have to learn. 
I am a student still. I am learning. That's all. Yeah, that's true. That's true. Because when you see the syllabus, it feels like, oh my God, you know what? I have achieved something. So let me just do that, do this. It's not that. It's also about being that humble student. Like, you know, I always say that be a dog in the street of education, you know, something like it's starving, it's hungry. Somebody gives it an education. You just go there and you just be friends with them. And that then they become your family. You know, that's how my teachers are, my mentors are. So thanks for that. So yeah, let's just move on. So how was your preparation strategy combined? Like, you know, you told about your using the game once and then again, cracking it out. You know, that's, a, that's, how, that's how a student life is also, right? You know, CH is a lot bigger deal than what you write in your engineering exam. Engineering exam, at least you have a syllabus. In your CH exam, you have a syllabus that says, okay, this much will be given, but there's no defined rule that is there. Everything exactly. under a sun in a cyber world is your syllabus. Exactly. So now, what was your preparation strategy? How did you come up with how, what are the materials that you actually study? Because a lot of times, you know, we don't have an idea about where to find it. Forget the fact that writing an exam, paying it is okay. You can get some jugad out of there. You can just do some, hey, you know what? Let me just pay off that thousand plus dollars out there. Let me just get it done and things like that. It's not like other exams. They're at least cheaper comparatively, like hundred dollars, two hundred dollars. But this is like a lot of deal. So we need to have a strategy for it. So what was your strategy while studying for CH? My strategy at the beginning was when I made up my mind that I have to write CH, I have to get the clear uh, certification done. My first thing was Google. Google Baba ki jai ho. First thing was that. So I uh, went on Google, I searched what are the preparations I need. Just a random search that we do, common search. So I got the modules from uh, EC Council of India. You can get it on the website, the modules that are required to study. So you can get the list. According to that list, you just have to memorize or you have to learn all the topics that are required to clear your exam. That is, if you take, for example, we take a social engineering or denial of service, malware threats, packet sniffing. So these kind of things, all you'll get in a single package that is called a cybersecurity. In a cybersecurity package, you'll get all of this. And coming to the IP things, you get it in networking. So going by that, you just have to uh, accumulate it in one part and make it as a common topic. You don't have to go individually. Like for example, if I, when I spoke about packet sniffing, packet sniffing, then uh, social engineering, denial of service, session hij hijacking, wagera, wagera, all the kinds of things. These kind of things, what all are there? These are nothing but a part of cybersecurity. So when you clear, when you finish your cybersecurity, automatically you'll know all of this, stars, all of this stuff. Then coming to your IP thing, IP, uh, IP stars, and the packet sniffing, then going to end mapping, port numbering. IP creation, IPv4 manual uh, manual configuration, IPv6 manual configuration, configuring it and Indian IP towards a different country IP. That all those are all the things that you have to learn. So going by all of this, you just have to remember, like create a, your own group of data that you have to study. Like how I said, cybersecurity and networking. Same way you have to make multiple uh, multiple types of things that you have to study basically. You can't completely say that, yeah, I'll study each and every topic individually. You can't do that. It will take a lot of time to study. Better than that, go as a common topic, study it completely, then you do. That was my way of approach. What I did was that I learned networking, then I moved on to cybersecurity. Then I went into specifically threat detection and malware protection. This was my, the you can say, a special thing that I did specifically because I had lots of interest in learning how a malware comes in. Because usually when we are working in the PC, we download something or you can take it as a phone also. Or download something, as soon as you do it, this file is harmful for your device. This thing pops up in your mobile. When it comes to your PC also, the same thing comes up. This thing, this file can be harmful for your, for your PC. I was like, why does this thing come? When we are ignoring that thing and we are installing the application, even though it's given as a warning, then what is the like parameters that are required when it comes to a malware? So going by that, I learned that then I understood why cybersecurity is very important. Cybersecurity, whether you learn it or not, doesn't matter, but you have to very specifically learn how malware works, how a hacker is ejecting or injecting malware into your PC, how uh, you can say an IP is blocked by the hacker, 
or you can say how a loopback address or a loopback IP is found. So these are the four parameters which I specifically uh, like suggest you to learn very much about. First, going by the IP cracking thing that we do in the exam, your IP loopback is very important because you are sitting in very different countries and you are going to hack the IPs of a very different country. Going by my experience, I'd like to say Boston, if you get it, you're screwed. Boston IPs are very difficult to crack. But if you do one Boston yeah, IP, if you crack it. Exactly. Seattle, Boston, and going by New Jersey is a new platform that has come up right now. New Jersey and Illinois, uh, this one also has come up. So Illinois, I'm not sure how difficult it will be, but New Jersey, I'm very familiar with it. So it will be tough to crack it. So I just hope if any of uh, the CS, uh, CH aspirants who are writing this year, please very uh, please be very comfortable with New Jersey IPs because that will be very, very much this time. Boston is being, you know, like kicked off because uh, the standards have gone higher. Now, to be frank, before in a world of 7 billion, there are hardly a million hackers. Whether they are popular, not popular in the limelight or not in the limelight doesn't matter. But now that has gone very high. Just because of one concept which everybody likes to do is Bitcoin. Bitcoin bought everything up. Because of Bitcoin, people started knowing, people got the knowledge of Darknet. That screwed everyone up. So now every person is going into a Russian website. They're learning Russian hacking. And I would like to mention this. I'm not sure whether it's true, the fact is or not, but very much people agree to it that Russians are the most notorious hackers in the world. No person can even you dare stand up against yeah. a Russian hacker. I have, I have heard this a lot. Because recently in uh, 2018, in the month of January, I had one person from Russia hack my own phone. I was using a Sony Xperia phone at that time. The thing that I faced was very annoying as well as very you know, laughing stock. I was using my phone as regular. I opened YouTube to search something. Suddenly my YouTube starts running on itself. It gets, it is typing on itself. It is opening videos on itself. It's closing on itself. My phone is going into the uh, mobile applications wherein my uh, Google Pay is there, phone pay is there. All the payment applications are that they are getting opened up one by one. But that person was, I wouldn't say a noob because he could hack a phone. He was partially noob, I can say that. He was not so good at hacking because he couldn't go into the UPI. He couldn't hack the UPI mainframe, so he had to have my UPI address. So he was going, everything was working exactly at the point where I enter my UPI pin or the debit card or credit card pin. That's the point he was stuck. Exactly at that point. So these kind of people, they are partially illiterate. I wouldn't call that illiterate on this matter. I'll call them partially illiterate because they don't learn it completely. So by going this, like why I said this topic or why I brought up the Russian hacker thing is because those people, they are bringing the ethical hacking stuff into the limelight. Because because of this darknet hackers or you can say black hat hackers, many white hat hackers have come up to stand against them. I'll take one name. He is a very good friend of mine and he is working right now in Mumbai crime branch as the head of uh, Mumbai crime branch IT cell. His name is Ashish Sharma. He is the, you can say in the year 2018, he was one of the top 10 hackers, Indian ethical hackers in India. He was very well versed in his thing. And what IPs we took half an hour to crack, this guy used to crack in five minutes. He was so well versed in it. Excellent level of hacking he had. Till date, I have not seen anybody who, who does like that. Going by that, this guy had all the knowledge that he required to do it. So he was an inspiration. He will be an inspiration to everybody because he has bought many things that are revolutionary to India. Going by that, he was one of the panel members who suggested that BitTorrent or the torrent websites that are there in India to be blocked because of the malware issue. Because of, uh, I don't know who, how many people know this, but in the 2019 when the COVID was hit, everyone was using online payment methods and many people have complained to the Indian government that they have lost a lot of money because of frauds like them, who have not even given, like banks have not any knowledge, not neither the people have any knowledge where their money went. It was just deducted from their account and it's gone off, it's vanished. So when this happened, 
he was one of the panel members who suggested that the torrent and all the torrent websites or specifically data traffic that is going to china or the web places where the data is being sold to people in you know like pennies you can say a person's data is uh, sold in a dollar you can call it like that in by inr you can say 500 rupees mein khel khatam a person's data is sold in 500 bucks it's like that so at that time he suggested that better we will do one thing we will put a firewall in india all the internet providers will be given this firewall that no torrent website will work without a vpn and when you install a vpn you are compromising your own security of the pc because you are connecting to an open malware network which can come any time into your pc so whenever you are studying for ceh please make sure you study what is packet sniffing very specifically because packet sniffing is the only method wherein you can learn how a packet is received and sent how much data is lost how a malware is coming in that is the only way you can learn and one more important topic which i would like to mention is cloud computing and cryptography cloud computing is very common to everyone now people who use apple devices they are very much familiar because they struggle a lot to store the data because apple gives them very less data to store their store, store in the cloud and they have to buy it by 80 bucks going by 15 gb so that's very much money that goes to india from india apple is profiting very much because people in india they have made it status symbol owning the iphone but they don't know what are the data securities or the network provided securities that apple provides them in the network why is an apple device 80000 90000 1.3 lakhs 1.7 lakhs why when the phone's manufacturing cost is just nothing more than 25000 that's it the branding that they do the network security that they provide the security going by everything that they provide that is the money that they take from you that is the reason you should use an iphone but there are some complexities wherein iphone is also like you can say introvert coming there because many places iphone has been compromised by iphone mac everywhere it has been compromised but i would say that iphone is still standing as the leader in network security and leader in net, uh, in security provided by any handheld device not going by the pc pc we have to secure it no one can secure it by other end that's the only problem but think by this one more thing i would like to mention is please make sure that you learn what is an antivirus it's very important because antivirus is one of the place where every ethical hacker or every black hat hacker has taken a blow because you think that yeah antivirus if we install it's very fine you can use it very nicely and antivirus can protect your pc from the malware but no not it, it hasn't to be like that to be frank antivirus is nothing but a virus which takes hell lot of data from your ram ram is being conserved and preserved only for the antivirus the cpu usage is also stored as well as any data that comes in it states that it puts into quarantine but doesn't do it has a specific storage wherein if a if you take it as kaspersky i'll mention kaspersky because i am very familiar with kaspersky so kaspersky what it does it is a 130 mb application comes in the cd when you install it there are two drives created one is the main application the other one is the dump so this dump stores all the quarantine so what an antivirus should do actually is it has to lock the dump so that the quarantine items should not come out but the problem is with every antivirus till date i have not seen a single antivirus that has the capacity to lock the quarantine or the lock the dump that it creates but there is one savior for all of this that is none other than our great uh, microsoft has created a windows defender that everybody you know ignores it completely windows defender is the only person or you can say only application that is inbuilt in your pc that can protect your pc 100% without any failure because what quarantine it does it doesn't come out so going by the same thing like the antivirus things that we are we were talking about the thing is like antivirus is nothing but A, uh, a application that just pulls your ram and keeps it to itself it is not a sharing application it's just you can say an attitude based application i would like to call it which keeps everything to itself it doesn't share so going by that thing so you just have to learn what is an antivirus how an antivirus works how packet sniffing goes in 
you just have to learn these basic concepts to understand how a malware comes in which is very essential when you are uh, you know cracking an ip so by that thing i would say yeah this topic is perfectly awesome and ch completely is based on ips so thing by that you have to make sure that you complete each and every module given by the enc council of india so if you go by that absolutely no issues with your exams are completely you can just clear it off you can just fly over it and you can clear it off that's it yeah that's true that's true because antivirus martha of course because itna like people have come up with it so if you think of a technology called as ramly ramly is a kind of an attack where you don't even get to know that an attacker is still pinpointing at you at every given point of time that it's in a ram and the drivers are there ramly js came in all of the sudden and it was actually shut down the yeah. project was shut down and things like that so there's a technology that is evolving but yet there is a chaos that we are just creating so it's not like you don't you don't have trojan in your code probably there is somewhere trojan hidden in your entire software base that's where sas tools dash tools ias tools come in in the devsecops world right so yes you know i am very fascinated about the 24 hour journey that any ch aspirant have i, I know there are some things that we can't say because it's all in the agreement that we just write in the exam so if you can explain in brief the 24 hour journey that you had because a lot of friends when we are architecting a solution we think that you know what redis cache is this that is this kafka is streaming this and that you know it's an added complexity all together and sometimes when i think of systems which are there on a cloud rack or a system which is there in my mobile it still has modem it still has graphic card it still has 655354 ports that's a hell lot hell a lot of amount of numbers that keep in and things like that so what was your journey in that 24 hours how did you approach the problem statements like you can you can share not the ips i know i know we can keep the ips in our mind until we fail in that ip but you know but but to an extent you can also clearly say as like what was your approach in approaching every problem statement that were unique in the ch every problem statement is unique but some really has to be the same old steps but some are unique so what was your journey in that 24 hours so my journey i would like to describe it is uh, in a very hectic way my journey was very hectic because i had one goal in my mind i have to finish as many ips as possible in the given time that was my goal so all the promises that was given to us but like you can say it's reading is very easy like once you read the problem statements you will have a you know thought in your mind or a feeling in your gut that yeah, it's very easy but when you go inside it then you start solving it it gives you nightmares because uh, i can say all the problem statements that are given the starting few of them will be very easy for you it will just boost up your confidence that yeah, it's going on perfect but going on the later part everything is damn tough one by one you face the issues wherein it will be one problem statement i'll clearly describe is we are given seattle ip wherein we had a problem statement that is seattle ip was uh, i would like to give an example that all the students that are there or all the ch aspirants that are there have a small thing whenever you are connected to your pc whether if it's a windows 10 one windows 7 11 or 10 you see a globe icon whenever there is no internet in your pc right so what we usually do we right click on it and we go to troubleshoot problems to check the basic problem that has happened so we commonly come across one thing that is called as ip invalid ip configuration invalid ipv4 configuration it comes what do you mean by it this question nobody thinks about so now let's talk about the famous internet providers of india jio airtel i talk about only these two whenever you come across any internet provider there is one common issue that is called a subnet which everyone uses subnet or you can call it as a call it as a subclass so these people refer it to as a subclass but we networking persons we may refer it to as a subnet so what they do in the city first of all every city or india what we are talking about india so in india what they do india is divided into sub uh, southern uh, like places like cities or you can say the uh, this one states so each state has its own subnet from that subnet another subnet term asking will come which will go for the cities from that cities you will get the internet from that subnet so what internet providers usually do 
they take bandwidth from the uh, world wide web and i uh, i will be very proud to say this the internet from like whichever continent you imagine in the whole world is being controlled by none other than reliance infocom of uh, you know reliance infocom for infocom india controlled by none other than mukesh ambani i am very proud to say that because every person in the world who uses internet you can hack them using reliance that is that is and has become you know a threat to the whole world because all the darknet hackers in india who are there they all are using mobile internet providers that are called as jio it goes through engineer reliance because that's the easiest path they can go for darknet hacking so that was one concept which we had to keep in mind when we had this problem statement because this issue was related very clearly to it because uh, what the problem statement was was is we were given a specific ip from seattle new jersey seattle <coughs> and this ip was very specifically had one issue the ipv4 and ipv6 configuration were missing and the dns server were not assigned so first of all we had to go through the basic procedure to crack the ip we had to find out what was the default gateway that was used being used there and we had to find out what was the dns address there but the major issue that we faced is we were never given such info this was my first attempt that time i had not prepared for it so i had no bloody idea how to do it so this was the ip which made me fail first of all because this ip was very hectic to do because we didn't even know how to approach it like how will you find out a default gateway whether it when it's not connected to an internet how i just given a virtual instance and you said find it out like it's like you are giving a 10 standard student a question paper without even teaching him a damn thing it's very difficult for a person so going by that what my experience in the, in my first attempt of exam was you have to be very prepared for it if you're not prepared for it you will is hell lot of issues where you can't do anything so this issue after the exam we had like i made some of my friends like four of my four or five of my friends who were there for the exam we all made up a team like we had to crack this however so we sat down one specific day after one week of the exam we sat down we were like let's crack this off so two people were from mumbai they were very well versed in networking i was not that well versed at that time so other three we were just you know like coordinating with them finding this and that doing in the internet search web search books everything we were like our whole the room that we had in mumbai it was like a go down of all the stuff like pcs are here and there all the books are here and there clothes are here and there food like pizzas we had ordered everything was here and there falling off we were just determined to find out what happened to this ip why didn't we do it why couldn't we do it we found out that was a silly mistake that we did was we never thought about configuring the ip manual ourselves that was the silliest mistake that we never even thought about because when a person has learned too much he tends to you know ignore the basics that is what a common issue person does so that same mistake we also did we never even thought that yeah we can obviously we can manually configure the ip finding out the ip that is given to connect just connect an internet to it and uh, find out the ip just manually configure it dns any how you'll get it on the internet just search it out and put it we never thought about it once we did it for freaking 3 days we just struggled about it and fourth fourth, fourth day just one guy came to fix our internet he was doing that the same thing he was doing because our internet was not working we were like why did we we try this stuff we instantly jumped on he was working on the uh, this one working on the internet modem is connected to one's uh, laptop so the rectified off we all five ran to the pcs and we were like let's do it we did it and it worked absolutely fine we were like wah beta bagal mein chora sheher mein dindora and uh, like okay fine so at that time we made one realization that if you don't go by the basics you won't be able to crack it ch the persons who make the problem statements they are the biggest geniuses in the world they make question in such a way that you tend to forget your basics and go to the advanced stuff wherein the answer is the basic here also we face the same issue and when uh, when i attempted for the second time we all five had decided in this one, seven months that we get we anyhow we have to just do one thing learn the basics that's all so when we went in we like every ip we took half an hour to crack it 
so every half an hour first 20 minutes what we uh, used to do we used to just analyze the problem statement and gather information what is required to pack it the other 10 minutes or 15 minutes or half an hour also whatever it takes it was just solving the statement so i would ask everybody to just go in with that kind of approach that will be far informative and far more problem solving than anything that you can imagine because if you understand the statement you can very easily crack it off but if you don't understand the statement and gather information about it then you will be in a loophole then you will continuously fall into the same place wherein the ip is not getting solved so rather than going through there better get gather information then go for solving it directly don't jump into solving it how much of a knowledge you have you might have 10 years of experience in networking you might have 20 years of experience in networking but always make sure that you gather the specific intel for the requirements then you proceed on the procedure otherwise it's better take your time do it that's it so this yeah, was my small experience yeah you know once you talk about that experience you know in hacking it's the same old step right it's the recon then the attack then you create the surface then you know okay this is where the flaw is let's use this flaw because that hacker uses a raspberry pi to hack you in right you know big companies have been ruined because of raspberry pi that's for sure you know you might be thinking that you might have set up an open vpn probably an open vpn contributor is actually hacking into your system so that's how it is it's all it's all still somewhere down the line still the recon that plays a humongous role in that hacking sometimes you can't you can't get inside infrastructure just like that when you think of serverless serverless has its own flaw how how are companies coming out with it are there no trojans written in your serverless code it might look so shiny but there is a whole level of complexity that is also getting added out there because not everybody can write an optimized code not every team can really embrace that hspc has embraced it but companies which are actually doing full on full serverless they are not able to keep they are not capable of getting that optimized code because that's how complex technology is so now my journey into cyberspace is just a step that's probably looks like an iceberg that's just a tip of an iceberg like every one every one of us still have that it's just a tip of the iceberg that we are touching on this humongous thing that are behind this so now speaking about all these ceh is good so now let's just jump on to an industrial approach so how do you feel in the way in which you are architecting the solution because a lot of times it's not just the excalidrs draw dot io diagrams that are coming up there you know it's humongous complexity that is getting solved that is you have to see what is that open source software doing on your infrastructure as well there is also chaos engineering that comes in like what if we randomly switch off all the clusters out there that we are just operating you know i always say bet on web because deep learning is still accessible using web because you deploy a model on an internet infrastructure but yet i read some papers where i felt like oh god deep learning models are so chaotic they they induce a lot of security issues so i want to ask you this question specifically what are what do you think is the ways in which we are architecting a solution today like are we architecting it right is a secure infrastructure more secure and what is the complex piece of puzzle when we are architecting for the security because a lot of times this is something that we neglect because we might say this infrastructure is great this cloud service provider is doing this much but until and unless and hackers find said you are secure so what is your view about the way in which we are architecting a solution to it using any infrastructure yeah going by what you said like going by the cloud services so a cloud service wherein like we can take an example of microsoft azure or you can say amazon aws anything is fine wherever you are launching an instance the instance is specifically based on a cloud server now they you can't say that neither of these cloud servers can be you know like completely secure which is unhackable nothing like that exists on this earth you can hack anything only thing is you have to get a piece of the puzzle wherein something of an interest a hacker finds in it now why do we do hacking why is ethical hacking so booming in india right now why is ethical hacking being considered as a very good profession in india why everybody is thinking about ethical hacking is because of one thing 
people they want to hack into something and they have to find they want to find something which is very you know like confidential that is what we indians are thinking about right now when it comes to ethical hacking we want to find the confidentiality or the integrity of something to come out because in india there are very very huge well kept secrets which no one knows about only the indian government is knows about other than that only we hackers know about because there are very much uh, secrets that nobody has ever touched or everybody has dared to touch so going by that i would share one of the th- things what has happened in india and it's very much uh, related to thing so uh, you might have heard about the this one right the, what is called as demonetization the currency thing what was changed yeah. so demonetization when it happened everybody switched to this one online payments but have you ever imagined did online payments exist in india before before even modi did everything have you ever imagined that because i would proudly say it was there but nobody ever used it everybody was so you know like involved in getting cash into their home that they never even thought about going to online methods the only persons who ever used it or ever exploited this resource were our great politicians of india who have kept billions of dollars as black money inside many swiss bank accounts which are done by wire transfer they are not done by physical transfer nobody ever imagined this just imagine the upi that we use right now the upi thing that we use the google pay or the phone pay or paytm whatever it is it boomed in india after 2018 till 2018 it was a dream for everyone to do that everybody was so scared to do it now everybody trusts it just imagine this technology was in us from the past uh, how much 22 years this was introduced in uh, united states of america in 2011 in russia 2009 and in austria in africa in other countries in 2015 what about india it came in in 2018 late 18s just imagine the thing that has been exploited by all over the world they have already done exploiting it they are coming into india after so long why because the indian government they had needed time to transfer their black money outside so that people don't find it the cash the gold whatever they had everything they transferred it off liquid transfer same thing goes for geo also why do you ever imagine buying such huge bandwidth at such huge prices why would that person will give you free internet that to for a year that to how much unlimited per day we had before then it dropped down to 4 gb then it dropped down to 5 gb per day now it's pay to money pay to win why did the, all of this happen it was all a strategy by the indian government you know there's a constitution rule in the indian constitution wherein any uh, big democratic uh, this one uh, what do you call a constituent uh, this one for assembly forms and they uh, pass a law any big law that comes in when it has to come out there has to be six members per present for that law to pass that is the supreme court or the high court judges who are selected as the supreme authority the prime minister the president the cabinet members and there are two specific persons which nobody even gives thought about they are the leading indian industrialists of india they have to be present there and we all very well know who is the leader leading industrialist of india so he came in he came to know beforehand before we all came to know he did all of it so when that happened every person thought about why was it given specifically going by the hackers that were there so they got the root out everything came out all the conspiracies came out so going by that this world is approaching ch or the you know like cyberspace in a very different way they are using it for materialistic thing they are not thinking as if it's just for money that they are thinking that yeah, we have to do this because we can gain lots of money but they are not gaining it for knowledge i would just mention one quote i'm not sure i don't remember who has said this but There's a famous quote all over the world: "People can steal your money; they can't steal your knowledge, because your knowledge that you have can buy you billions of dollars, you can make millions, billions out of your knowledge that you have. But you can't buy that billions of dollars by the money that you have. 
money will go and come but if you have the knowledge that money can be doubled tripled anything can be done so people that are approaching ethical hacking as a money making thing please don't do that because ethical hacking or ceh or any type of thing that is related to your daily needs everything is for your knowledge you gain knowledge you make your life more secure at that point of time the money that you have that will be more secure because the knowledge that you have that will make it secure now if a person has millions of dollars in his bank account and he doesn't know how to secure it what will he do any hacker can you know like get the data that this person has millions of dollars why don't we steal it many people in india might have heard about carding they were doing it also they steal credit cards from other countries they use it here and they get caught also many people are there who are more intelligent who don't get caught what is this there is nothing but finding a dump in the bank uh, bank servers wherein you get data to use the data for, to create a fake card and you use it so that is nothing but stealing which people are doing legal and illegal ways legally they are learning how to do it but illegally they are using it for you know like illegal stuff so these kind of approaches that people are having in their mind please remove it off because ch is a very prestigious exam and ethical hacking is a very prestigious title ethical hacker that title that you get it's a very prestigious title don't misuse it please that's a humble request from aran because we ethical hackers we have struggled in our whole life just to get that title just to gain that title we had to struggle three freaking years of our life just to understand how it goes please don't misuse it and going by that now the ch that is standing that is the ethical hacking scene of india it's very booming and it's very profitable also in your every way because in india there are many it companies that are coming up or the present it companies are very developing right now because india is called as a developing country so that going by that thing every company will need to have somebody to test their websites to test their software their ethical hacker jumps in as you said rash this comes in here rigorous testing what we do what software testers do rigorous testing why don't ethical hackers do that they can do it in a flaw these people from software testing they have to struggle they have to code they have to do this they have to do that to just test a software rigorous testing what they do but ethical hackers they don't have that kind of struggle it's very you know it's a piece of cake for them just to test it out you go to the code you run the code find the flaws throw it at the face take your money that's your job simple as hell that's all you have to do you don't have to you know go illegal ways to earn money legally you have hell lot of ways to earn money why don't you go to a company and approach them i am an ethical hacker i'll provide security for your company give me a job they will wholeheartedly take you in they'll never say no to it because every company whether it's a small it solution company whether it's a small scale company a startup or whether it's a multinational company such as infosys all the companies it doesn't matter every company needs a cyber security person who can hold their integrity who can hold the security in they that is lacking in india right now in the cyber space that is created in india is revolving around cyber security because integrity is the only thing that is questioned right now you are the, all the companies are questioning all the people being an i have been a hr manager for four four years i have had only one thought in my mind can i trust this guy i'm giving him a job in my company if he leaks the data of my company what will i do that was the only constant thing that we have in our mind going by the same way why don't the ethical hackers who are sitting at home doing nothing who have cleared ceh or going to clear ceh who have no specific ways of earning why don't you go to some company and approach them make me an it head i'll make a company secure show them your caliber they will take you in why will they not just imagine you are going to a startup company who earns but take a give or take 1 million 1 lakh per month if you tell them give me 2000 bucks i'll secure your company until your company grows which dumb idiot will want to want to take you in just let me know you have to just think about only one thing if you stay loyal integral to any institution or organization they will keep you in a higher place eventually one or the other day that institution or that organization will go up when it goes up they will remember your integrity your loyalty to them and your security that you have provided to them 
and remembering that they will give you a better salary they will give you a better job there why can't it that why can't we make that a theory here in india people are thinking only about your financial status i am working in this company as a this, uh, as a whatever positions you have but don't think about that think about the achievement that you do many people in like our uh, forefathers our elders everyone they say one thing your parents should never be called you should never be called by your parents name that yeah he he is my, his son na your parents should be called by your name because you should have achieved something worthwhile for example if your father is going there hey look this guy's father is going there that should be the approach of every person that, that this guy has achieved something it should not be like uh, for example sharma ji ka beta ja raha hai not like that dekho sharma ji uh, kya bolte hai pakad lo rakesh rakesh is his name rakesh ke pitaji ja rahe hain rakesh ne ye achieve kiya uske pitaji ja rahe hain rakesh has achieved this he has achieved that his father is going that is a very respectable situation for our parents for everybody who love and care for us that is the mentality that every ch aspirant every ethical hacker should have he or she should achieve something that is worthwhile and notable if people are not noting you please move on don't stick on to it i have seen many of my own colleagues in while working as a ethical hacker i have come across hell lot of people who have worked with me who have you know like done projects with me but I have very much places seen like uh, our uh, Ashish Sharma. What I told about him, this guy was in the not in the limelight for four years. Nobody recognized him for four years. Now he has come into the limelight because he bought up something. I can't say that it's very confidential what he has done. That thing revolutionized his life. Now everybody knows him in Mumbai. You go to Mumbai. In Mumbai, you just take his name, Ashish Sharma, Cyber Cell. Everybody knows him. every freaking person knows him that is his caliber that he has so every ch aspirant everybody just concentrate on getting your limelight into you that's it search for your limelight go to it that's it walk towards your limelight don't run for money money will come behind you if you are successful if you have the knowledge to gain it money will come automatically you don't have to run towards it. that's my basic uh, thing that i have learned from all of my 11 years of work work experience that i have right now. i just learned one thing experience gains money money doesn't gain you experience that's the only thing this is the way you have to approach cyberspace right now so that will be all yeah you know like it's also about like not getting sticking on to one technology for a long run like let's say you have a legacy system legacy system don't have to do a lot legacy system can evolve dot net is there to evolve right every alternate years of releases will always be a long term support of course you can use that but making sure that you evolve with the dotnet infrastructure that is a challenging so what is learning what is the learning that is required when you are tackling a social engineering attack and also the large scale enterprises how are they supposed to learn it because a lot of times it's just that simple approaches that really kills us at the end of the day it's like oh god we didn't know that this secret was out in that repository and we still are so fascinated like you know what it was still there and some people have already exploited it already so what is it all about when we are tackling problems using social engineering attack like it can be a victim or else it can be a person who's attacking it so even ddos is a kind of a social engineering attack which happens yeah, on a lot of us on lot of us like if you own a server if you own a pc there is a chance that you are being ddos at one given point of time so what is it all about when you are tackling a problem using social engineering how should large scale organization learn from it because bounty programs are there there are this that but there is an ethical hacker who is always you i that he knows that here is the pitfall in your entire infrastructure so what is it all about when social engineering attacking surfaces and creating those attack surfaces using social engineering so going by the question social engineering when we hear the word social engineering one thing comes into mind is it related to engineering that is study not like that so social engineering what we refer to is completely an it based industry 
wherein every large scale manufacturer or large scale enterprise whatever is there or every small scale enterprise that is there everybody has an it admin who monitors everything that is in and out of the institution or the organization so whenever that comes in how do we approach it like how do we tackle the you know like issues that goes in so to tackle those situa- situations first of all an ethical hacker will already have learned cyber security so he or she will have that knowledge how a malware attack is done how as you mentioned earlier ddos attack how the, how is a ddos attack done so i'll be very you know like summarized or brief on it i'll not go into the depth of it how it is done the simple thing is there is one hash code or you can call it a batch file which is called as a ddos batch file which is mentioned as ldios we call it as ldios batch file so this ldios batch file is very well available in the darknet very easily available you just type it off in the darknet you will find it off easily so whoever knows how to use darknet they know very well how to use ldos so this ldos attack what when it happens the thing that it does is it's nothing called as ip bombarding we call it as ip bombard so as you mentioned earlier about servers whoever own servers they are very well faced with the ldos attack so i myself have done it to test it out how it goes in to my own server so i know how it goes thing is whenever a server is running it has to constantly maintain a connection to the server to the client so how does it mention how does it keep the connection in through the ipv4 or ipv6 addresses now what happens is uh, you might have heard of the game gta 5 or the grand theft auto 5 from rockstar games so this grand theft auto 5 has been facing issue from past one month that is called as ip shortage so the players that are there every player has been assigned a specific ip from the server that this person is connecting through this ip to our server so when you reset your pc or your internet is reset your ip also changes so when this ip is changed what happens your previous ip is not getting deleted from the rockstar servers so many people are facing this issue that they are not able to go into the server so at this time rockstar had come up with a brilliant idea they gave an open source bounty com bounty per contract that whoever whichever ethical hacker can bombard the server and clear all the static ips that are there unused that is very long time unused ips if you can if you can remove it every ip you remove we will give you 500 dollars so this was the bounty program from rockstar and very few ethical hackers knew it so everybody jumped into the scene and they rescued rockstar right now rockstar is standing very efficient without any issues because of these people who helped them out so what they did was they all launched by coordinating with each other ddos attack at once at very specific time at very specific uh, at to accurate to the second they launched a ddos attack this ddos attack what it did it replaced every ip with the static ip that was there already were dead actually which were not being used for a very long time so when it got replaced it became a standing ip that is a operational ip so when that operational ip comes in your server tends to find out with how many connections are coming in when a server protocol or you can say now i'd like to mention there is something called as firewall also which we people know and we don't know anything about it we just have heard about firewall but what is firewall we don't know firewalls are nothing but a certain set of protocols that are set for incoming connections to go in or outgoing connections to go out that is packet sent and received to monitor how much is going and what is going so that same thing comes into the server so when a server is faced with this kind of heavy ip bombarding that time this server specifically has one state of line of command that restarts the server and resets it to be original state that is when the server was launched at that time the zero ip state of the server will be restored when these kind of things happen so these people when they bombarded the server it's so heavily all the servers in the in the rockstar cloud they restarted they re, they were reset to the original position and everyone was able to enter again because of the ips being erased so this is one type of procedure which is followed by every company so all the companies what they face the issue is they will be given one static ip to the company specifically mentioned to their name so i'll give you an example let's take it as a general ip 192.168.1.1 for example this ip is mentioned to infosys so they will have one static ip which will be dynamically assigned to everybody that is for going by one they will buy certain set of ips from 1.1 to they'll buy for example to 100 so from 2 to 
these things will be assigned dynamically to everybody who logs in at what type point of time and logs out at that time it will be released so it is nothing but it's like a rope that we use to climb up a wall and leave it off once we are done so it's just like a use and throw thing so once you log in it will be logged in once you log out it will be erased and it will be given back to the main ip vendor now the fun fact that is happening in all the companies is that the static ip that is there it's being leaked because of deep scale surfing or you can call it dark net surfing this is a very very you know like new concept that has come up or you can say a very new database that is being created by the dark net hackers who hack into every company they took out the, they took out their every confidential data that is including the static ips of their companies and they put it in sql database or the cloud database just go and access the database get the file bombarded and your company is crashed so to safeguard this what ethical hackers nowadays are doing is they are creating their own certain set of firewall rules wherein it is clearly mentioned when a password for example my i have my own company so i'll do one thing i'll my skip my company name that is my company name is jack solutions so i'll just keep it solutions at the rate 123 is my password for example now this password will be 128 bit encrypted that is a standard encryption procedure from all the all the you know like password uh, things that we do the uh, algorithm but all the ethical actors nowadays what they are doing they are using 526 bit or you can say 1024 bit 1g 1 gigabyte 1 megabyte encryption they are using for big big companies they are using 1 gigabyte encryption gigabyte encryption when it comes in or megabyte encryption that comes in it's very you know like advanced or diverse for a topic or you can say it's not a well known topic to everybody this is a very new topic that is coming in from all the ethical actors all over the globe who are constantly working to develop this topic wherein do create an encryption algorithm which secures it by a higher encryption key that is encrypting your encryption key again now whenever you are encrypting you get an encryption key that encryption key is again encrypted to make it 256 bit again it will be encrypted to make it a higher in one so this keeps on going until your highest level of encryption goes in and that highest level of encryption key will contain the original encryption key of the first thing there is a first encryption that you have done 128 bit encryption that you have done that will be contained by the last megabit encryption so this is a procedure which is being developed by the ethical actors to secure the high end like higher infrastructure companies that is working out right now so going by this this procedure this is done only for keeping one thing in mind that your company's integrity your company's data is completely secure and no hacker who is a darknet hacker also can't come into your company and pick out your integrity because once a company's data is leaked they are finished because there are many secrets that a company has to keep being an entrepreneur myself i have many secrets that i have to keep from my own sister also my own sister is my you know like financial advisor in my company but i have many secrets that i have to keep from her also because being a ceo i have to just you know like keep something secrets which i can't share with anybody it's a secret between me and the person that i'm working with that things i can't share like how much money that i'm receiving or many kinds of scenarios are there which i can't mention so these kind of things that are there they have to be secure as hell you can't give out it anywhere so this is a complexity or the integrity of a company that is very important to be secured so this is being worked on by today's ethical hackers so going by this so ethical hackers today they are like the new hackers that are coming in they are not approaching the you know like experienced ethical hackers for these kind of things they are just going in for fame now for example i'll give you a simple scenario which is goes on today's generation that is the kids that are coming in to study in colleges right now you have a girl you have a crush on some girl guy will say Uh, please hack your uh, instagram and give it to me so a person goes in he hacks the instagram gives her the uh, gives him the id and password how do they do that do they know ethical hacking no then how do they hack it's nothing very complex you go into google you search you find a zip file which will contain an exe file that is called as encryption hacker you just put in the instagram id it will give you the id password of damn easy only thing is just setup of it is a little bit, little bit tricky That is only people who knows little bit about uh, computers. They can do it. Phishing attack can also be done. Exactly. So these are the kind of situations wherein you know, like ethical hacking, they have taken it very lightly, only for hacking people's account, getting the personal data, blackmailing them. This is all the things that's going on right now. 
ethical hacking has become legal but illegal we can say that legally people are getting certified but they're using it for illegal means now i'll give you a movie reference if you like uh in Ta- telugu there's a movie i don't remember the name actually i'll let you know the movie name later uh the it's completely based on how you use darknet to control a person's life digital life it's a very good movie uh what do you call what is his name um i've forgotten the, the uh, guy's name in that movie they have very specifically explained a guy goes in to get a loan from the bank just by his one signature on the check his whole life is screwed his personal data his phone everything is hacked just imagine he blackmails the guy stating that your sister's private conversation with your uh, fiance is also with me imagine that kind of data integrity is lost once your data is off once a hacker enters your life your life is screwed to the core so to protect all of this we have to approach ethical hacking in a very different way once we set up our own community in security once we set up a community where we can secure a person's life or a company's life they will provide us the financial thing that we need that is the approach that we need to have in social engineering that is our job in social engineering specifically where we tend or learn to make the life of a company or an individual safe as hell protected from other hackers who are not legal who tend to destroy a person's life now going into india there are many things that has happened that is vulgar as well as very bad to say many people have uploaded private uh, like private time spent with uh, like couples and all recording them illegally they have uploaded a lot of things so why don't we work to stop this wherein we like pornography is also one stream of thing we can't stop it it's a business or it's like a work at the work profession in other countries in india it's not uh, encouraged but in other countries it is uh, obviously encouraged so we can't stop that but why can't we make it secure wherein a girl's integrity a girl's you know like prestige and pride is protected wherein a person who is uploading is a verified one why can't we do that why can't we approach the government to do that being an ethical hacker i can understand how a person's life gets affected when digitally your life is viewed by millions of people what you do behind a single room door closed lights off that is our personal life nobody has the right to check it out that is our personal thing why should a person take it and make it his own livelihood by make it his income this is the thing that india is being devastated on india is being you know like pitied on and scolded on people all over the world they are just asking one question why are you using hidden cameras if you have so much potential in that why don't you go and make it as a profession why don't you legalize it as a profession because anyhow now even though you don't make it professionalism mumbai has the highest number of things where uh, you know like a uh, flesh trade i'll like to call it flesh trade better than the other words that are more vulgar so flesh trade has become you know like very common there in the, in mumbai delhi going it's very high delhi mumbai chennai all of these places there are very high things that are going on why don't you take them and make them a legalized one wherein they have their own license they have their own rules that this will be a certain age and you can't force anybody into it if they are interested only they can commit why don't you make such kind of rules to it this will be a social social engineering thing that we do this will be one type of thing that we can inspire people on because we know the integrity that happens when an an internet is used for a bad you know like a bad thing because internet nowadays is becoming you know like a stream for uh, illegal activities so going by that why don't we make our own firewalls why don't we make our own you know like community wherein we can protect each and everything that comes from india stays in india that is our own integrity will be secure as hell why don't we do that so nowadays as uh, i just said being this is a very disturbing topic i know but still this topic needs to be addressed by everybody because many people are losing their lives because of this many people working in companies they are being blamed for the integrity things that they have not done some people because of just hatred they'll blame them that you have leaked the company's confidential data 
and actually they haven't done anything the, those are the hackers that they've done from me and also there are many companies who are looking for people who can develop a security thing or it admins are being searched but people because of their mentality of you know, making themselves famous they don't go for this kind of approaches they tend to lag behind on it they are just lagging behind stating that no i want to become famous i don't want to go work for somebody under on one roof why should i work for somebody when i can work for myself this is the mentality that indians are getting right now i can say one thing if 400 engineers uh, like graduate from a college in one year in that 400 at the max how much 15 to 20 people will obviously go for entrepreneurship and they don't even try for other you know, like higher studies or going into some company as a job they will right away jump into entrepreneurship that you want to start a company just imagine i'll give you a simple you know worldwide example like india wide example which everybody will understand people used to buy royal enfield bullet before that was very you know like a state symbol for everybody because they were very rare nobody used to have that was that much of the bets but nowadays what it has become it has become like a sheep in a sheep market everybody owns one so so what's the you know like uniqueness inside so rather than having that, that you know that going and making yourself famous i am a entrepreneur instead of saying that make yourself unique in creating something unique like if you make a firewall for a company that is so unique that nobody has it that company will recommend you to the other companies that yeah buy a firewall from me you will have the patent to it you will be a patent owner you can write your own thing you will be you know like awarded with a you know like it field some award that comes in i'm not sure what awards are there but think about it people who make a film they die for receiving a film fair award people who you know work as a scientist they die to receive a nobel prize why can't we make our own community wherein we can also receive some kind of awards for doing something good for the company or any any it field so that is one space wherein our ethical hacking field is lagging a lot we are not encouraged for the work that we do we are lagging behind in that so social engineering can help us in many ways that is the way we approach if we don't approach it uh, right in the right way we will again lag behind and again somebody has to you know come up and you know like bring it up like how ethical hacking was brought up by nadal nadal dudoski his name is not so famous nobody knows him that much but he was the first darknet hacker who he was the only person who was ever capable enough to hack the pentagon the most secure site all over the world he started hacking he was the father of hackers he just was pissed at one thing he was working in pentagon he was kicked out of pentagon because he just questioned the integrity of pentagon security he took it so much into his mind and six months he cracked the whole thing and he said screw you guys he literally wrote the text on the screens of the people and said screw you pentagon after hacking them that's all they did he didn't steal any data he didn't remove any data he didn't delete any data he just hacked it so that he can say to them screw you pentagon imagine that's the passion that guy had so find your passion in this what drives you to become a ethical hacker what is your goal in becoming a ethical hacker find that and now moving on to you know like the benefits of ethical hacking after you become a ceh uh, like certified person you have a very big benefit that is you will be given by the government some websites or some applications wherein you can hack them and find money to you know give out flaws i'll give you a simple example the income tax website that came in recently so that website whoever like was appointed to test the website that hackers they were appointed each person received 18000 just for one flaw 18000 rupees that was a very good opportunity for all the hackers who were selected so you just have to write a small exam for it and upon your knowledge you will be selected so it goes in that but there is one more world which is called as bounty hunting world which is called as a bounty world in ethical hacking that's very famous in this you can make a fortune you can make millions of dollars just sitting at home and doing nothing how it goes one by one we'll go to first of all what is bounty hunting what is bounty bounty is nothing but a uh, prize money that is placed on somebody or something so going that way now i develop a software for example it's a software based as you know like uh, going for photography now let's take sony which is the leading developing company in photography they developed a photography software now they want to test it instead of giving it to a specific software tester 
they'll give it as a bounty program in the website there are specific websites which give you access to the bounty programs of specific companies if you want i can give you the link later okay so in that websites when you go in you will find the bounty programs you just have to enroll to it and if you get selected to it you will be called by the company you will be under strict monitoring you have to turn on your video you have to turn on your uh, audio and you have to sit in the same place you have to give your pc access completely wherein they can see what you're doing you just have to give them flaws regarded to their software okay so if one software one flaw you get you will be paid 10000 you get two flaws you'll be wait double that 20000 if you get uh, three flaws you'll get 30000 but there is one criteria in bounty programming which is called as set of rules in bounty program that is called as five program rule so once you find five flaws your prize money is doubled if you have 50000 dollars five flaws are found you'll not receive 50 you'll receive 100k 100000 dollars convert it to indian currency it's heck lot of money i'm talking about indian uh, specifically so just imagine every person who is a ch certified person why don't you go for all of this why don't you go for bounty programs wherein you can earn money for yourself where you can do something which is you know more informative and more working for your thing that you have worked on for so long you have wrote an exam that is 24 freaking hours long why don't we make it a worthwhile time spent why are we just sitting at home and hacking somebody's instagram and giving it to them why are we sitting at home and hacking some you know like websites and doing why don't we go in for a large scale work or work that we do why don't we upgrade ourselves when we can upgrade our phone when we can upgrade our pc why can't we upgrade ourselves why can't we upgrade the knowledge that we have so going by that uh, right now microsoft is out with its bounty program google is out with its bounty program because google is launching uh, youtube studio in the like new format that you can say right now youtube studio is in a like a congested format wherein you have very less tools for uh, you know cut paste wagera wagera so now youtube studio is specifically going to you know like challenge adobe premiere pro and all the other applications directly by giving all the tools that you need for video editing inside youtube studio so that is one thing which is a bounty program that is running right now microsoft is coming up with windows 11 uh, developer build uh, edition 21h12 that is the edition that is coming out so that also has been called, uh, called out as a bounty program to test out how many flaws or how many errors you can find so other than that mac is also coming up very soon uh, iphone 13 iphone 14 will be out so for that mac testers are also needed who are very well versed in testing iphones or macs so those are all the things that are there there are hell lot of opportunities for you guys you just have to explore the internet i like to mention one word in this way, very specifically one word you can say one sentence please learn seo search engine optimization if you don't learn search engine optimization you can never find anything that is you know related to what you want to see if i want to see something that is related to ethical hacking and you just go and search the yeah, ethical hacking basics if you just type it it will not be you know that much informative because it's a, it's a wide diversity in that diversity you have to you know specify and you have to you know shortlist what data you want so there are specific keywords that you have to use to search same goes for bounty programs also bounty programs don't pop up instantly as soon as you go to you go go to after you see this just go to google and search bounty program you won't get it there are specific ways and specific keywords where you have to go and search for bounty programs which are legit one more thing i would like to mention here is find legit bounty programs not just any bounty programs because bounty programs are hell lot of there in the world but legit bounty programs are very less so whenever bounty programs come out use the opportunity apply for it and get it off if you get it off you will be paid well a well amount of money and that money you can use to develop your own knowledge and your develop your own skill set nowadays whenever we you know go for interviews or anything related to a uh, job uh, specific profile nobody will ask you how much you have scored in your uh, pu like 12 or 10 slc or your degree or masters or engineering or this one bed or whatever it meant any study field nobody will ask you how much you have scored everybody will be looking out for the knowledge that you have that is the mentality that indians have developed right now the people that are sitting in high end corporate companies the corporates are looking for knowledgeable people who can do their work efficiently they're not looking for people who can you know just come have do time pass and go off because many people are there in the mnc companies or it companies 
just come for show up i myself being an hr of ibm for four years i just you know like have kicked out so many people i've written resignations on their face they've written resignations i've written terminations i've signed them and i've thrown them off in the face because they were just a showing off things clothing then you know the relationships being showed off that yeah uh, he is my girlfriend he is my boyfriend i'll do only work with them i'll not go to other teams these kind of things are very bullshit that is going on so when you come to the ethical hacking point of, uh, point of view you just have to remember one thing your career doesn't end with only you know like uh, government websites or bounty programs ethical hackers have the whole computer science ocean to them you uh, you don't have to specifically stick on to computer testing software testing nothing you can go to any field my dears you can go to any field you want you just have to have that you know determination that yes i have to go to this field that's all it will hardly take you a month to prepare for any field just go for it don't think about it for a second just move on do it you have to have the determination to do it that's it nothing else you have to worry about bounty programs we will share you the uh, share you the websites later once we do that you can join in for the like whoever is ch already cleared certified you can go in for to check it out other than that if you want any help you can just move on to our in my instagram i'll just share it with vishwas sir so he can share it out with you guys if you have any questions related to it just let me know on it i'll always be available via mail or instagram or uh, by you know like any LinkedIn. other necessary yeah, yeah. discord also is given so anything you can contact me on so it's that sure, will be all sure. sir sure i think i think This is the most passionate interview of cyber that I have done. You know, I have done with DevSecOps engineers, DevOps engineers. You know, once you once you come with the cyber knowledge, you know that's a whole new deal that you are dealing with. You know, I think I'm very glad that I interviewed you. You know, you spoke a lot. You spoke your heart off about ethical hacking. You know how the community has to grow up. It's not about you having a VM which is Linux, Kali, and Windows, and on your Mac or something like. It doesn't work out that way. You need to rip your ass off. Once you don't rip your ass off, you're like, okay, man, I'm I'm the I'm the king of something, but I am not king of that thing. You know, there's no king here. You know, everybody is striving hard to be the best. You know, striving hard to deliver the best out of what they can. You know, that's what we in the DevOps world do. We call it as an institution. We call we don't call it firm. We don't call it company. That's how we are, right? So it's always that evolution. Think about that evolution that you are supposed to be pioneering towards. That journey of building the best package of yourself for the tomorrow's world. That's a big challenge. I think. Thank you so much, Sujit sir. You know, such a passionate person. You know, I think you are one among those passionate people that I have in my list of people that I love to talk with. So thank you so much. I Pleasure I wish I do a lot of podcasts with you again and again because lot to learn from you, lot to explore. And thank you so much, sir. Thank you for having me. Yes. Perfect.